Hi, welcome to 3D Natives Lab. I'm Elliot and today I'm going to go over our test of the brand new Ultimaker S7. As you may know, Ultimaker and MakerBot merged together a few months ago to form a single brand called Ultimaker with a capital M. The Ultimaker S7 is the first product to be released by this new entity. Despite being the first printer made by Ultimaker, the S7 will be fully integrated in the well-known Ultimaker S line of FDM 3D printers, following the path of the S3 and the S5. The printer itself was introduced after a full year of research and development and has been put forth as a steady improvement over the existing Ultimaker S machines. Notably, the S7 includes a few additions in an effort to improve the accessibility and ease of use of FDM 3D printing. Over the last few weeks, we had the chance to get our hands on the Ultimaker S7 and put it through its paces. So, without any further ado, here's our review of the Ultimaker S7. So, what's the Ultimaker S7 all about? Let's check out the specs, starting with the hardware. At first glance, the S7 looks very similar to the S5, and it has repurposed a lot of the S5's components. Both printers share the same print cores, motion system, materials, and print volume of 330 by 240 by 300 mm. Also, the chassis of both machines are very similar. Despite all these similarities, the S7 does differ on some points. First, the S7 is fully enclosed and equipped with an air manager for improved temperature control and air filtration. Essentially, a thermometer monitors the temperature inside the print chamber and regulates it by adjusting the speed of the exhaust fan. Second, Ultimaker replaced the glass plate used on other Ultimaker 3D printers with a new reversible magnetic spring steel sheet coated with a rough PEI surface. This replacement of the print surface was done for a few reasons. The main one being reliability. Thanks to their customer feedback, Ultimaker was able to conclude that about one out of six print failures that happened on their printers was caused by a bad first layer adhesion. By replacing the glass plate with a PEI coated steel sheet, Ultimaker has confirmed a print fail reduction of 50% for all issues related to the first layer not being laid down properly. Third, the inductive sensor for improved bed leveling. The S3 and S5 are equipped with a capacitive sensor for bed probing. But here, the S7 relies on an inductive sensor in order to mitigate the electromagnetic noise and interferences, thus ensuring a better mesh mapping of the print bed. Force sensors and pins to avoid user errors, such as leaving the front fan bracket open, forgetting to place the print bed and misplacing the print bed. Fifth, an improved camera for remote monitoring of prints. Sixth, a single glass door instead of the barn doors found on the S5. Seventh and last, the inclusion of 5 GHz Wi-Fi connectivity. For the ones that didn't get any first-hand experience with the Ultimaker S3 or S5, the Ultimaker S line consists of Cartesian FDM 3D printers that use a dual extruder Bowden setup and interchangeable proprietary print heads, named print cores. They feature a 4.6-inch display with an intuitive menu, a motion system using steel rods and ball bearings, three NEMA 17 stepper motors, pulleys and belts. The printers are made out of machined aluminum sheets, acrylic panels, and a few injection molding plastic pieces. On top of all the aforementioned hardware similarities, the S7 shares even more with the S3 and S5 software-wise. All three printers use the same in-house developed open source slicer, Cura, and can be managed wirelessly via internet through the Automaker Digital Factory. Even though they use the same slicer, Cura has changed a lot since the launch of the S5 3D printers. Since then, Ultimaker has added over 280 third-party materials and developed a few of their own. Seriously, who doesn't know Cura? It includes all the basic features, as well as more advanced features such as tree support and lightning infill. When registered online through the digital factory, the Ultimaker 3D printers can be controlled and monitored wirelessly for personal or professional use by setting up a team of users to collaborate. On top of the printer control, the digital factory includes maintenance plans to help you take good care of your machine. For this new machine, a new update, the 8.2.2, was released on launch day to include its own printing profiles. But the printer has also been upgraded thanks to diverse firmware upgrades. The S7 seems to be following the same trend as just after booting up hours, we were prompted to update it with the latest firmware. During our time with the Ultimaker S7, we had the opportunity to test out a few materials 
that gave us a good idea of the capabilities of this new FDM 3D printer. When inspecting our S7, we did notice that our specific printer wasn't lubed enough and that the steel rods of the Y axis were a bit loose. We decided to correct these small issues before continuing our test. Hopefully, this issue shouldn't occur on production printers shipped out to actual customers. Our first prints were done with a tough PLA that came with our machine and allowed us to print our typical FDM test and Benchy. We then were able to test out the multi-material printing enabled by two print cores. To then test out the machine at its full potential, we decided to also print some more technical materials such as carbon fiber reinforced nylon parts, aka PACF. Now, your turn to make your own opinion on the S7 by having a look at the X prints. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's a clear statement Ultimaker is making through this new release. After a few years since the launch of the manufacturer's latest 3D printer, and following the recent union of Ultimaker and MakerBot, we would have expected a completely new and overhauled line of 3D printers. But after all, even to this day, the S5 is still one of the most popular professional 3D printers on the market. As it shares a lot of similarities with the S5 and looks alike, the S7 does feel like a kind of S5 Plus or S5 Extended. The S7 is indeed a steady improvement of its older siblings that could very well replace the S5 and its air manager add-on in the future. As a matter of fact, both printers can use the same G-code interchangeably to print. This new printer will coexist alongside the rest of the S-Line and will enable users to fully enjoy the ecosystem built by Ultimaker. On top of the S5 and S7 being able to share the same G-code, prints can be set up through the digital factory to run in any compatible 3D printers available from S3 to S7. Even though the price point of the S7 has not been officialized yet, it has been announced that it would be a bit more expensive than the S5 plus Air Manager. As such, the S7 can seem to be an expensive FDM machine, but the hassle-free experience and reliability of Ultimaker's S-Line is the main focus. On top of that, Ultimaker's 3D printers have never felt outdated over the years, thanks to continuous software and firmware upgrades ensuring a good user experience and high quality prints. After a few days of testing and experimenting, we rated the Ultimaker S7 with our usual criteria, giving it a final score of 9.5 out of 10. To see how we calculated this score, you can read our written article here. To discover other 3D printers tests we have done, click here. See you soon for our next review on the 3D Native Lab.